Oh boy, Sony is off to a great start in 2026, guys. Cracked open the liquid death for this one. Let's take a drink, uh, but before we get to that, let's show a little image of my PlayStation 5 right here in its entertainment center with the little controller dock. I got the Pulse headphones, the console. I barely touch this thing, honestly, but it is a good console. I would say out of the three current generation consoles, it's probably going to be the best bet for most people. But there is some crazy, crazy shit that is going on right now. Uh, for anybody who is unaware, who has not heard about this yet, the Sony PS5 ROM keys have been leaked. This is a major, major problem for PlayStation 5 security. And it's going to open the floodgates wide open for all kinds of shenanigans. We're talking piracy. We're talking online cheating in various games and so much more. We're talking about opening up the system and opening up for emulation, including for PlayStation 3, which would be really nice because Sony apparently doesn't care about emulating PS3 games and so much more. Now, this isn't technically the first time that we've had a PS5 jailbreak. Uh, as you can see, there's a lot of different YouTube channels that have talked about it. Now, some of these, of course, are talking about these ROM keys that I've dumped, but there's been a lot more that's been going on. This has been a scene that's been in progress for several months, if not years. I mean, you release any kind of technology like this that is close-ended, people are going to try to do whatever they can to circumvent it. Whether it is for good means or bad means, either way, it is going to happen. It is an eventuality. This has happened for all the previous PlayStation consoles, all the way back to the original PlayStation. This has happened to systems all the way back to the Atari 2600. So, Circumventing this kind of stuff is absolutely nothing new. But what exactly does this mean? So the PlayStation 5 ROM keys that they are talking about is embedded in the actual chipset of the PlayStation 5 console itself. It is one of the security checks that ensures that you are playing games that are legitimate, that you have legitimate hardware and so on. So when you connect online to play online, to download patches, uh, to download games, and so on. This ensures that you are playing on a legitimate PlayStation 5 console, and you're able to proceed from there. Um, now, as I mentioned before, there has been a PS5 jailbreak scene, but Sony has been able to patch those exploits via software updates, via firmware updates to the console. This is something that cannot be patched. So every PlayStation 5, at least, that is currently sitting on store shelves or sitting in people's homes, is subject to this particular vulnerability. So this is going to open the floodgates wide open, as I mentioned. Now, it is entirely possible that Sony could address this for future consoles that are produced. Um, perhaps... In the new year, as we start seeing new PlayStation 5 stock hitting store shelves, those systems may not be taken advantage of by this exploit like the current consoles are. So that's also going to increase a little bit of a demand for anybody that is into hacking consoles, to doing mods and things like that. It's going to increase the interest on getting some of the older hardware. Because surely the newer systems, they're going to do whatever they can to kick the can down the road and uh, make the hackers work for it, right? So, this reminds me a lot of the Sega Dreamcast. I don't know if you guys remember the Sega Dreamcast. I don't know why I'm looking at these stupid articles here. But the Sega Dreamcast was, a, was Sega's last console. And it was considered to be unhackable according to Sega, when they first came out, because they came out with a brand new disc format. It wasn't just a normal CD, 
Uh, it was something called a GD-ROM. And this GD-ROM had a higher capacity than a regular CD. It wasn't something that was available in consumer level products. Like you couldn't get a GD-ROM burner for your computer uh, to do like what people did on the PS1 where they would get the mod chip and solder that in and they were able to play pirated games and all kinds of stuff like that on the PS1. Um, no, instead, this was a completely new format, proprietary, and it had a higher capacity. And part of the reason they did that is, of course, to address the issue of piracy because they had seen that there was problems with it in the past with the Sega Saturn and the Sega CD. They both were affected by piracy in some regard or other. But the Dreamcast is infamous for being probably the most pirated console of all time. And you might be wondering why that is. Well, like Sony did in the case of the PS5, they kind of left open a huge exploit. Uh, with the case of the Dreamcast, they had something called a mill CD format, which was intended to be used primarily from what I understand, like enhanced music CDs that would include additional features that were not available on like a normal music CD. And the people were able to figure out that that basically was a backdoor into the console. And lo and behold, you know, because of that, we had a lot of piracy during the span of the Dreamcast. Some people would say that it was a pretty big reason for why they stopped supporting the console and went third party. Um, I guess, you know, time could only tell because there was a lot of other issues as well that Sega was dealing with at the time. But that was definitely a major contributing factor for sure. So crazy times for sure. But on the plus side, it does it did give us the Dreamcast homebrew scene that we have nowadays. There are still new Dreamcast games coming out to this day. It's such a popular console. Um, it's one of my favorites for sure. I mean, Sega really did an awesome job with the Dreamcast. And although I'm not as big of a proponent of the PlayStation 5, I mean, like I said earlier, the PS5 is probably the best of the current generation consoles, uh, pound for pound, uh, in terms of the game lineup that you have available, the software that's available. Um, it is affordable compared to the Xbox consoles because Microsoft thinks it's a good idea to raise the prices twice on them. Um, you know, obviously a much bigger selection than what Nintendo has right now with the Switch 2. You know, that could probably end up being really good later on down the road. But right now, software lineup is pretty scarce on the Switch 2. So, I mean, if somebody was in the market to buy a new game console, I mean, the PS5 is most likely the first choice. And if it's not your first choice, I've got questions on why that is, <laughs> you know, if you aren't in the new systems, right? Uh, even like a lot of the Xbox fans and whatnot are making the switch over the PS5 because Microsoft's really let them down. So this makes me wonder what Sony is going to do exactly because they've already sold like 80 million PlayStation 5s. There's no chance that they're going to be selling another 80 million PS5 systems to make it 160 million. I don't see that happening, especially with the way things are going with the increases to prices, the RAM stuff going on. They're talking about GPU prices. NVIDIA is saying that they're going to be increasing the price potentially up to $5,000 for the RTX 5090. Um, this is not a consumer market anymore. And Sony's going to really struggle to bring up new hardware that's going to address this particular issue. And they're not going to be able to easily patch out any kind of issues with this exploit. Um, basically, they could ban people on a case-by-case -case basis if they find out they're using like one of these uh, modified uh, software programs that are able to hack the system. But it's going to be tough because from what I understand, there is a game put out by our good old friends at Limited Run, uh, Star Wars Racer Revenge, which is a 
you know, the Star Wars pod racing game from back in the PS2 era. And, uh, you know, they did a recent version of it, I guess, for the PlayStation 4. Uh, that thing can crack it wide open, um, you know, based on your software version or whatever. And then eventually, you know, someone's going to figure out how to just crack it wide open, regardless of whatever firmware your system is on. You know, because if it's got that particular ROM key on your console, which, like I said, applies to every PS5 that's currently on the market right now, um, you know, there's nothing they can really do about it. Yeah, <laughs> it's what a great way to start the year off, Sony. Holy crap. Holy crap. This is fantastic. I am curious. I really am curious if I should do this modification on my PS5, because I don't really play it that much anymore. It'd be interesting to do something with it, you know, something different, something that uh, would maybe renew my interest a little bit in console gaming, because I mainly PC game nowadays. I mean, PC is where it's at, in my opinion. And uh, yeah, I mean, I, be nice to be able to play games without having to pay for online services. I'm sure that's something that could be handled through a modified console. Uh, very possible, you know, that they could have their own custom servers for online gameplay. That's completely separate from what Sony offers with their PlayStation plus program. Um, you know, of course, like I said, emulation up to PlayStation three. Wouldn't that be nice? being able to play your PS3 games upscaled up to 4K potentially on this console, possibly even higher frame rates than what was originally possible, which, yeah, you could do that on a PC right now, but this would be a very user-friendly way to do something like that. And just so much more, you know, there's a lot of things that you cannot do on a PlayStation 5, like, say, play a music CD, for example. Uh, this is something that people potentially could do uh, as a result. Uh, not to mention that even if you don't go around downloading games on the internet, on some kind of website, you know, sail in the seas and all that good stuff, you could take a legitimate game with this exploit, be able to copy it to your console. And unlike how it normally works, where it checks for the disc every time, It'll just assume that it's a downloaded game and you'll be able to launch right up. So, you know, people could easily just go to GameStop, buy the game, copy it to their console, and then just return the game and get their money back and they got a free game. So people don't even have to go through the dark web or whatever they call it. I, mean, I don't think it's really called the dark web, you know, like that's, you know, that's, you know what I mean? It, like, they would uh, circumvent normal things to go and download these ROMs for these games, you know, or ISOs, I guess they would call them. And uh, yeah, it's fantastic. It's fantastic to see. <sighs> Jeez. Sony's cooked. I, I really think that. I really do. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Don't forget to check the video directly above me if you haven't watched the most recent one. And over on the other corner, the algorithm is going to send one that's going to be fantastic. And if you like this kind of content, don't forget to subscribe on the lower left-hand corner. But that's going to be the last line.